making the handles because we don't get power tools or anything like that, right? So everything's made. Cool. Has anybody ever used a hand drill before? No. Nobody, some people. So the hand drill that I'm using is actually from the 1800s. Obviously not the drill bit, but the, the rest of it is. It's from the late 1800s though. So, so you'd buy the pole? Buy the handles. The handle. Then we have to uh, make them a handle. <laughs> oh. See, he drilled the hole. See, that one went through easy because there's already a hole drill. <laughs> mm -hmm. And this one's gonna take a little bit longer. Drill? What's a drill? What's a, what's a so hole? this, so what I'm doing is that by turning this, I'm moving that. So it's drilling through, it's making a big hole. Wow. So that way, because I need to hammer something else into that hole. How many holes do you have to hammer? Just two. So I'm cutting these dowels because this is what the twine that's going to hold the whole room together. What that's what's going to get anchored to. Twine is stringy. Twine. Is twine. Is twine. Is twine is a string. Mm hmm. So here's a boom back. Wow. Hey, over here. Yeah, yeah. There we go. Okay. We'll get started in one second. Has anybody ever seen a broom being made before? No. No? <laughs> no actually, I've been doing broom making here since 2004. Which, believe it or not, was 13 years ago. That's <laughs> scary. It was like quick, right? No, uh, I was I was taught actually. If you go up to the schoolhouse, there's a fiddler up there. His son uh, taught myself and my brother how to do it. He was the broom maker for a few years. How many have you made? Over eight thousand. Oh my! Wow. How long have you been doing it? Uh, for this is my fourteenth year doing it. We just came for the Thank you, sir. <laughs> so I'm just gonna anchor this down. This whole thing gets held together with tension. So. Uh, however tight the twine is. Um, the twine that I'm using is a waxed hemp twine. So it can take, so hemp on its own is very, very strong material. Uh, but then once you wax it, it can actually take between 100 and 120 pounds of pressure. So I just anchor it down there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this material, it's called broom corn. Uh, broom corn is a type of wheat or sorghum, if you're familiar with that. You guys can uh, pass this around. You guys can pass that that way, okay? And you guys can pass this this way. Make sure that everybody in the back gets to see it too. Okay, uh, if you feel the stalk, it almost feels a little bit like bamboo. So it's very, very sturdy stuff. And we use it for making brooms. It's grown almost exclusively for broom making. Even if you go into modern day stores, if you see anything that says a corn broom, that's this material. Uh, they just abbreviated it. Now, broom corn is a type of wheat or sorghum. It grows about 10 to 12 feet high, covered with a husk and filled with seeds. So as you're all examining that, the part that's the bristle, that's all that you get of bristle. The rest of it is all stalk, the other 10 feet. It's native to Africa, but it didn't start being used for brooms until the 16 or 1700s. And actually, in Africa, they don't use this to make brooms. Uh, they use other uh, river reed plants. At least that's what I've been told. So if it originated in Africa, somebody had to bring it up here. Mm. So, Probably yeah, here? the Europeans, uh, when they were in Africa, they found this plant and then they started using it. Prior to that, what Europeans were using uh, for brooms was twigs bound around branches. But if you think about it, okay, the floors that Europeans had prior to that, like in medieval Europe, your floors are typically going to be stone or dirt. Okay, um, so you don't really need anything too precise. But when they started making more uh, wooden floors and tiles places, mm -hmm. then they started using this material. Very, very good at sweeping up. <laughs> now, like I said, it is grown almost exclusively for making brooms. However, uh, semis, about 12 years ago or so, there was actually a genetic engineer that modified broom corn a little bit. And you can actually get more paper for acre with broom corn than you can with trees if it's modified. So maybe one day we will see broom corn. 
Okay, so right now what I'm going to do is something called the X pattern. Excuse me. The X pattern is where I'm going back and forth between the sets of dowels. So this is going to help to hold the group together. Now, incidentally, as we're going, if anybody has any comments or questions, just feel free to uh, shout them out. You don't need to raise your hand. I'm not a teacher. Uh, and also, uh, so if you were to sweep every single day uh, with a historically made broom, it would last you five to six years. Yeah. yeah. Yes, sir. What's your question? Oh, also, how much would a boom like this cost? How much would it cost a homeowner to buy a So, the most expensive, we'll come back to your question, okay? Think about it. Think about it. But, uh, so the most expensive broom at the time was what we're most familiar with seeing now. It's a flat broom, where it looks like that. Okay, flat sewn brooms were developed by either the Amish or the Shakers. I have to say both because we don't really know. Um, and so that was developed because if you increase the surface area of the broom, you decrease the sweeping time. Okay, uh, Amish and Shakers traditionally don't have carpets. They could have rugs, but not carpets. Um, so you would extend it so that way you can sweep a little bit faster on the wooden floors. Now the type of brooms that I make in here, and I do make flat brooms too, but every single broom comes out as a round broom when I'm done making it. Okay, round brooms are historically the more accurate broom. They were developed first. These are the ancestors, or uh, the ancestors of these were those branches with twigs. Um, these work just as well on hardwood floors, but they're not as wide, okay? Uh, so it just took a little bit longer, but they actually do work better than vacuum cleaners on carpets. That was actually done by University of Michigan, North Dakota, one of those Midwest ones, um, where they actually did a study, and it does work better than a uh, vacuum cleaner. All right, uh, what I just did is that I did something called tapering. That's cutting down the stalks at an angle toward the handle of the broom, so it's gonna make it look uh, just a little bit nicer, a little bit cleaner, or if any of you are into this sort of thing, it makes it a little bit more aerodynamic for flying situations. Uh, so, what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna put on some broom corn. Uh, the broom corn that I did already was just in a box. So when we get a box of broom corn, we get a 50 pound box. It comes with almost 20,000 stalks. I have to look at each stalk and determine if it's inside layer, outside layer, or garbage. So a lot of the garbage broom corn that I have, um, we feed to animals or I'll use it to make pot scrubbers. Pot scrubbers are kind of, it's made out of this material. It looks almost like that, but it would be cut clean. Um, there's two pieces of twine like that, and it's kind of like a 19th century Brillo pad. A coarse side and a fine side. Okay, they're pretty neat, they're nice little things. Um, so yeah, so I'm gonna grab 11, 13, or 15 stalks to put onto here. I'm trying to find the longer, more slender stalks. These have been soaking since about 10 o'clock this morning. They need to soak in warm water for at least an hour. These, this has been cold water, but it's been, you know, almost three hours, so it should be fine. Maybe it's been fine for the rest of the day so far. And I'm trying to find ones that are all equal in length or about equal, because you can only go as long with this weave as the shortest stalk is. So, the spaces in between the dowels are called quadrants because four of them. There we go. Okay, so since there's four of them, each quadrant is going to get three stalks, and one quadrant is going to get four stalks. So, while I'm sitting here talking about this, there is actually a lot of mental math going on. So kids, pay attention. Because it'll help you make a broom one day. All right. So I just need three more after these ones. Like I said, this is also just kind of... Actually, you know what? This one's going to get 15. Why not? Let's go crazy. Excuse me? Yes. Yeah? Yeah, I'm a, um, I want the broom. You want the broom? Well, you're in luck, my friend, because we do actually sell the brooms here. Okay. What do you do with the broom? So when we sell them nowadays or back then? No, back then. Back then, that most expensive broom, I think you asked that and I didn't answer. Yeah. Um, that most expensive broom was the flat broom. That would have went for 25 cents. Now, put that in perspective for you. Men were only making 48 cents a day. So think about what you make now. I don't want to know it because I'll be sad. But uh, <laughs> divide what you make by two, and that's how much a broom should cost. So for some people, that's very, very expensive. Even minimum wage, you're still looking at a you know, $30 or $40 broom. We charge $20 today? for them now. What do they cost today? $20, yes. yeah. For the round brooms. Flat brooms are $25. They take about an extra hour to, to stitch it. Um, 
And then there's also these little hearth brooms like this one here, which is 15. It's got a shorter hand. All right, what I'm doing is another X pattern, kind of tightening it up as I go. What we end up doing is out and doing the entire outer layer and then we're putting in a new outside layer. Um, which would result probably in, in all of you leaving me alone. Um, and me being very depressed. But uh, right now I'm just lifting up. Okay. See, you saw me go very really slow with that one. Um, just because that was still very, very strong. Um, so you want to go slow with it because if it's still very strong when it's wet, that means that it could snap very easily. Um, as I'm sure many of you felt with those broom corn pieces that I passed around, uh, like I said, it's almost bamboo-like. So if it snaps, it snaps. You see this one how it's split. You yeah. Almost, it's going to be four pieces by the end of this. Um, that's fine. You just need to make sure that you go over it in the same fashion. Every single part of it, you want to catch the right direction. Also, you might see this twine here loosen up a little bit. That's because what I'm doing on the weave here is so much tighter. Thank you. Is so much tighter uh, than that portion. That, that loosens up. But like I said, all the energy is maintained throughout the whole room anyway. So it doesn't affect its sweeping ability or anything like that. And by the way, in terms of sweeping ability, this broom's already done. It's a fine broom. Uh, what I'm doing now is purely aesthetics. So the style of broom that I make here is a late 1700s through 1840s or so style of broom that only the wealthy would have been able to afford. And this is the one that would have went for 25 cents. A common broom, the most expensive you're looking at, still about 18 to 20 cents. Mm. And it just wouldn't have the weaving part of it. Wouldn't that? have the weaving, yeah. You would just end it, it would look very, very plain, very simple. How many brooms a day could uh, a good uh, broom maker make? So it depends on, on, on how long your work day is. Um, they did this in the winter time, so your hands are very, very cold when you're working with the water because you can't do this inside, uh, well, you're not going to do it inside the house because you didn't really do stuff like this inside of your own home, and you wouldn't do it inside of a barn because in the winter time it's very cold out, right? So if you want to stay warm, you need a fire. And you're not going to put a fire near this inside of a wooden building. Um, that's asking for a problem. So you would do it outside with a fire near you, try to keep a little bit warm. But uh, it, like I said, it depends. You know, in a six hour day here, most brooms I've ever made was around on a Halloween weekend, I made 23 brooms in a day. Why would it be done during the winter? Because over the summertime, you need to cultivate your crops. Uh, so you did it in the winter because there's nothing to grow. So you gotta make money somehow. This is how they would do it. Now because of that, a lot of, far a lot of uh, farmers were broom makers, and this was not something that you apprenticed for. This isn't like blacksmithing or hat uh, This is something that would be handed down from father to son or daughter. Uh, it was also not a genderized role, so it could be men or women doing this. Typically it was men, just because at the time, uh, women would be inside cooking and cleaning, all right? Um, the men would be outside doing other stuff. Yeah, uh, it, what it is is that when you first start doing it, believe it or not, you actually do build up calluses on your hands. Uh, so when you're first starting and you're doing a lot of rooms over and over again, it's actually kind of painful. As well as there's little things that can go wrong that once you've done it a lot of times you, you pick up little tricks on how to prevent things from happening. But you can actually cut yourself on the broom point. You can cut yourself with the knives. If the twine, let's say your finger is underneath the twine, yeah. you can get your blood circulation to your finger cut off. Um, so just lots of little things. Like anything. But uh, I mean I've I've done blacksmithing, I've done hat finishing, I've done some some tin smithing. Um, I like to do this the best. Uh, it's like, a, it's like a good combination between relaxing and then also you're, you're working some muscles, so it's, it's nice. Yeah. I also like to, like when you guys came out today, how many of you said, oh man, I'm going to go to Old Bethpage because I want to see brooms being made? Yeah, yeah. Probably not many unless you've been here before. Um, and that's what's kind of cool. That's why I like to do this. Most people look in their closet, they'll see a broom, and they don't think anything about it. You know, Myself included until I start doing it. You just see a broom. It's a broom. Uh, we like to showcase things that not everybody gets to think about. Everyone thinks 1800s and they'll think, and no offense to blacksmithing, I love blacksmithing, but they'll think, oh, I want to go see the village blacksmith, you know? Very, very cool. Uh, but you want to also show things that nobody thinks about. Things that are, things that are a little bit thought provoking, and I hope, I hope that's working out for you. But, uh, yeah, just so this way you can see how much work and time goes into making a room. 
from start to finish, this broom is probably going to be about 15 or 16 minutes. Um, fastest I've ever made a broom is a little over six and a half minutes. <laughs> so that would be a pretty good uh, wage back then for a good broom maker. Yeah, so the thing is, is when people purchased brooms back then, you would only buy one at a time. Um, most families, though, would have one to two brooms, and this is broom products, from pot scarvers up through full-size brooms. They would have one to two brooms for each room of the house, one to two for each fireplace, and one for the porch. So on average household, at any given time, you're looking at between 18 and 25 brooms. Okay. Lots of brooms. Nowadays, how many of you have more than one broom? Exactly, maybe one or two of you. Um, but back then, everybody had multiple brooms, and the reasoning was when you bought your newest broom, it would go to the most prominent room of the household, the parlor. Okay. Uh, then it would work its way after maybe six months or a year, it would go into the master bedroom. <laughs> then years and years of use, it would go to the porch, uh, excuse me, the kitchen, and then out on the porch where it's just going to fall apart after, you know, sweeping every day with it. The idea was that people didn't want to mix the dirt from the kitchen into the parlor, okay? Um, because that wouldn't be, wouldn't be proper. The parlor is where adults entertain their guests, okay? Children were not allowed in the parlor until they were an adult, which was 14 years old. Uh, the only time kids are in the parlor is if they are serving their parents' kids. So for the kids out here, to put that in perspective, could you guys do you guys play like video games or hang out with your friends in your living room? Imagine not being allowed in your living room. Yeah. yeah. That's your parents' room. That's for their friends, not your friends. How do you make the rooms without the machine? Carefully. Um, the way that they would do it is you would take twine and stick it underneath your foot. Then you would hold the handle, and somebody else would be layering on broom corn while you're going like this, trying to keep it tight. Um, you can't be, you can make it still decorative, but it won't come out as, as uniform. Um, that's going to take you nonstop work for four and a half hours. With this, I could go have a root beer, walk around town. Granted, it's wet, so I do have the time constraint of I don't want this to dry out. But otherwise, it's fine. Yeah, you can, you can leave this alone for a little while. So we're going to keep going. This one right here, he's splitting. He's the shortest one, I think. So we're just going to keep going with it uh, until we get to the end of that one. Like I said, you can only go to the end of the shortest stock. Sometimes you can actually get the weave to look long, like too long, so it starts to look kind of bad. That's not going to be the issue with this one here. I like longer weaves anyway. Have you ever got hurt when you were doing it? Yes. Yeah. There's one thing I will say, and it's usually kids. How old are you? What grade are you in um, school? What grade are you going into? I'm going into fourth. Fourth grade. I was going to say, you look like I you're in fourth grade or fifth grade. So usually, and it's always fourth or fifth graders that say, uh, have you ever gotten hurt? And there's one piece that I'm going to use to cut down the stalks, and you'll see it. And they always ask me, "Do you have you ever gotten hurt on that? And the answer is no, because I still have all my fingers. <laughs> yeah. But we'll, we'll, look at that, uh, we'll look at that after, and hopefully we can continue the trend. So. <laughs> We'll get to that in, in just a couple of minutes. Yeah, we're almost done here. No, no, that's fine. Listen, I need a clock, you know? So when you first sweep with a, a broom, when it's cut, when you first sweep with it, first three or four times, four or five pieces of broom corn will fall out each time. Not full stalks, just individual bristles like that. That'll just fall off or something like that. But then eventually that'll stop happening. Like I said, after four or five times that'll stop happening. Um, and then the broom is just a functioning, functioning broom. Um, they are really, really good. So what I'm going to do now uh, is I'm going to lock down the stalks in their respective places just because these ones that are splitting, uh, they're doing something where they're actually coming apart because they've been soaking for so long, they're coming apart in my hands almost like, uh, almost like pulled pork. Okay, um, that's kind of the consistency of the tearing. Of it. So, if any of you tear pulled pork, pulled pork. All right. Uh, right now, I'm going to put on a little loop. The loop creates a tight and visible knot. Everybody over here, say ooh. ooh. Uh, there we go. All right. It's just a piece of rope. All right. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this on here. Uh, this is going to create a tight invisible knot. Invisible meaning that it's going to be underneath the twine, so we won't be able to see it. But like if you if you were here for the whole thing, you saw me anchor it to this back dowel. We're building off of it. Tension's all in here, and this is where it's going to end. So the tension is going to stay within the broom itself, and that's how the whole thing is held together is with the tightness of this twine. Here. Okay, so I'm just going to get rid of that. I don't like it. And I'm going to go around twice. What I'm going to do is I'm going to forget about this for right now. 
Uh, I do need to make it tighter though. So for that, I'm just going to very lightly put one or two fingers here. Uh, this is going to add something called back pressure. The back pressure can get so much tighter than this can get because if I tighten that up too much, this rope snaps, then it loses all the tension. Um, and it will undo all the tightness. This here puts the pressure on that, not on this. That also. If that makes sense. Uh, lots of little confusing things with the uh, room maintenance. You just kind of kind of keep being aware of what you're doing. Now, if you bought a broom back then, and for some reason, not to say you skill it, yeah, yeah. I'm sure they're yeah. perfect, but if you bought one back then, it wasn't made right, and there's something can't part. Would it be fixed or can it be repaired? Or so, yeah, it depends. Or? It depends. Um, I've... Not you. I'm no, no, I'm saying... I'm, uh, yeah, but, but this is good first-hand experience because I... Uh, so I've been doing this since 2004. This is my 14th year doing brooms. I've made over 8,000 brooms. Uh, I've only had seven come back for repairs. Now, what a repair can consist of is actually repairing it or you have to take the whole broom apart and rebuild a new one. Um, the only thing that has ever gone wrong, aside from this one time somebody bought it here and they blatantly took a scissor to the floor, um, is that the dowel will break. And that happened to the older ones that we used. They had probably the same thing in the 1800s to, to broom makers back then too. It all depends on the type of wood that you're using, right? The type of wood that we use now is oak. When I first started, we were using pine and poplar, um, and that would just snap the tension. Like we'd be making it and it would break. Uh, or you know, someone would get home, they take this, slam it up against the house, and then all of a sudden the wood would break. The oak, as you know, oak is a much stronger wood. Um, so, yeah. But yeah, no, it definitely stuff can be repaired, and if it can't, you can just make a new one. Usually you can use the same handle too, which is kind of neat. Alright, so right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut down the stalks to uniform length. What would be the overhead in the materials? I'm sorry? How much would the materials cost for the uh, Not the a lot. Um, so for the most part, when people got wood back then, they would just cut down a tree themselves. Uh, or in the terms of bees, yeah. uh, you would just find any, any downed branches or anything like that. So, you know, you're constantly, back then especially, you're constantly doing work all year toward your end goal. So, um, you know what, if you want to make brooms, you're going to be gathering stuff up all year long to help you make brooms. Same thing with farming. You know, the off season is not just for making brooms if you're a farmer, it's also for buying the seeds that you need, as well as buying the farm implements. Maybe, maybe something went wrong with Bessie, right? Something went wrong with your cow, now you need a new cow. Um, and then you have to train that cow how to do what you want it to do. You know, they did, they did a lot with, with their thought process, and I think that's something different from, from what we have nowadays. I mean, obviously some people are very, very wrapped in their jobs, and that's great. Um, but uh, back then your job was your life, okay? Uh, when you went home at the end of the day, you were still at work, especially on Long Island. Almost, We actually have more trees now on Long Island than there were back then because it was all cleared for farmland. Yeah. All right. So here we have an almost finished broom. So that's what it looks like. Next thing that I'm going to do is use that fodder chopper. And that's what I was saying before. Mm -hmm. I've gotten cut by knives before. Cut by the broom corn versus I've never been cut by this thing. All right, so this is an original. Everything else that I've been using to this point is a reproduction or it's part original, part, uh, part repro. I'm going to cut about a foot or so away from the bottom of the X pattern. Cut about there. And this just goes quick. It's kind of like a paper cutter or a guillotine. There you go. All right. Now I'm just going to make sure that I can get some of the dust and dirt out of there. Now this is called the round broom. So believe it or not, at the head of the bristles, it should actually be kind of square or rectangular. Um, which doesn't really make sense, but it works. Okay. And there you go. All good brooms are still the standard head. So uh, the last thing that would happen to that, and with these other ones that I made today, is just a little tack will go into that excess twine that's that's hanging down. So that way it'll keep that, make sure that that knot stays in there. But if anybody has any comments, questions, or complaints, feel free to let me know. If you guys have complaints, the exit's that way. How much are they? How much are they? The long-handled brooms we sell for $20 now. Um, the short-handled one like I have here is $15. Okay. Where do you get them? Uh, we buy them here? Or? Yeah, I don't have any change, but yeah. <laughs> we're not buying one. Yeah. The one that...